Welcome to Legally Speaking with Attorney Antoinette Osborne. This program is for information purposes only. If you need legal advice, you can contact me, Antoinette Osborne, at 718-502-9137. That's 718-502-9137. The office focuses on divorce, immigration, bankruptcy, real estate, and estate matters. We also do eviction proceedings. There is a second office in Jamaica, West Indies, that focuses on legal representation. If you are seeking to buy or sell property, or if you are looking to wrap up an estate. The office is conveniently located at 88-28 Sutphin Boulevard in Queens, we're right across the street from the Supreme Court, and in the Bronx, we are located at 4262A White Plains Road between East 235th and East 236th Street. We are between Jamaica National and Mr. Sims, the accountant. This morning, I'm going to be doing a series on victims of domestic violence who qualify for the green card. So I know I will not be able to get everything done today. So we are going to be doing different episodes covering this topic. It is an important topic in our community where victims are able to self-petition on their own in order to get the green card. So this morning we are going to be focusing on domestic violence in an immigration context and how it can assist in obtaining a green card. Just tuning in, you're listening to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne on 93.5 FM WVIP. As stated, I, I believe we're all in transition mode as everyone is aware as to the status of the station. I am going to be starting a YouTube channel and my old episodes that were published in the past are going to be uploaded on the channel. In addition, I will be starting a podcast, so I will be providing the listeners with information in this regard. Uh, There is no set time as to when we will be off the air. However, in preparation of this, There are alternative means that I am opening an avenue for my listeners. Now, domestic violence, it is in fact a serious topic. I believe it is a crisis in our community. And one of the good things is that immigration has created a path where you have legitimate victims who can apply by themselves, referred to as self-petitioning, so that they can get the card. And what is sad is this ability to file was nearly removed because there is so much fraud attached to this application. And the ability to do so was nearly taken away. And this is the travesty of justice where you have people who abuse the system could have caused legitimate filers from losing this ability. And I'm telling you, you you scammers, you choppers who put people legitimate application at risk will be unto you. All right, so One of the good things about this application is that it allows certain family members of U.S. citizens or 
green card holder to file for a green card without their abuser's knowledge. So that means the the U.S. citizen or green card holder spouse does not know. And for other qualifying relatives, the abuser is not aware that you are filing immigration, does not notify them. And anything they send in, it's not going to be taken against your application unless whatever they're sending in can be independently corroborated. So this application can be done based on the abuse you sustained and the abuser has no knowledge of it. He does not have to consent to it. And you do not require him to participate in the immigration process. And and this is important because some people are filing, they are being abused, and they are filing while still in the abuser's home. And this is why the mail is not sent to the self-petitioning spouse's home because immigration has to ensure that the mail goes to a safe place. So oftentimes, you're using an attorney, it goes to the attorney's office. So in order to create a safe space for the abused person, immigration does not like to send the mail to the home because the abuser And some people remain in these abusive relationships because of economic reasons. A lot of people do not want to go into the shelter. From what I've heard, the report, yeah, there is a legitimate reason why a lot of people do not want to go into the shelter. All right, so the family members who qualify for this are the spouses, children, and parents of U.S. citizens and the spouses and children of green card holders. So they're still maintaining that familial relationship that causes you to get a green card. So the immediate relatives of the U.S. citizen being the spouse, child, and usually child under 21, and the parent of the U.S. citizen has the ability to file this application. For the green card holder, it is just the spouse and the child. And this goes to the fact that a green card holder cannot file for a parent, right? So people like to ask, can we start the process and upgrade? The black letter law is a green card holder cannot file for a parent. And because a green card holder cannot file for a parent, a parent of a green card holder who is being abused could not file this, what is referred to as a VAWA, right? The Violence Against Women's Act petition. There are a different avenue for you, but you could not file this specific petition. So just tuning in, you're listening to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne. If you have a question this morning, you can call in at 718-502-9137. You can also text your question to 718 718- Five zero two nine one three seven, and to make an appointment during the week, the number to call is seven one eight five zero two nine one three seven. So the family members who will be able to fall within this classification are. Spouses, children, parents of U.S. citizens, and in addition, for green card holders, the spouses and children. Now, the opportunity to file is given whether or not 
you have divorced your spouse. And if you've divorced your spouse, you have within two years of that divorce to file this application. Or if your spouse has died. There are a few circumstances that allow this. And I believe last week a lady had called off your radio, love. <laughs> All right. I, I, if you call in and I hear your radio and I get that feedback, I have trigger fingers, honey. I am going to disconnect you. Once you hear my voice, you have to turn off your radio. It creates a feedback for me, and it creates a feedback for my listeners. And I'm really not going to be doing this every week to repeat the same thing. Turn off your radio. Simple. Yeah. All right. So, one of the saddest things is where you're in a marriage and you're being abused. And there are a lot of reasons why people stay. Some people stay because of the children. And I really don't think you're doing your children any justice by staying in that. Yeah? Um, another reason is because of economics. And I'll tell you this. Some of you are in relationships. The day your spouse can self-sustain themselves finan financially, that's the day you will no longer see them. A lot of people are hanging on to these relationships. The love has gone. And it is just a matter of convenience. And the day that dependency ends, it is what we will call liberation, where they can just move. I think one of our brethren had said, boy, no, Antoinette, when I'm... One of his bros was in a different state. Can I remember if a Pennsylvania or what? And the weird woman are going to panic me now. Yeah, man. Wicked man. But time is the master. And I'm a whole it. Because some people are in relationships. I hold them a whole it. And them just a wait. Because the injustice and the hardship. Yeah? Sometimes you wish you could be able to see crosses so you could just avoid it totally. Caller, you are on the air, love. Good morning. Morning, you're darling. You're filing for a first. You did just get your green card and you're filing. You want to file for it. Uh, like my son. Mm -hmm. I want to know the time, the time period and what is important to use. All right, so it's taking two plus years for a green card holder to file for the son. If your spouse is a U.S. citizen, then and that child qualifies for a stepchild, and I'm referring to a child being a child under 21. If it is a child over 21, it is going to take about seven and a half plus years. Uh, if you... If the child is a legitimate child, that is, you were previously married to the mother, then your burden is not so great. If that child... Okay, the mother could do the filing. Which mother? The, the biological mother? mother? Biological? Yes. It's, yeah, a, we're still married. Okay, so if... And what's the biological mother's status? You would I just get our green card as well? Yeah, the, the, it's, I'll tell you this. For, for, well, your child is legitimate. So whether you or her file, it doesn't matter. But if it was an illegitimate child and that you never married the mother, the burden is greater on the father. So it's going to be the same time okay. period with you or your wife filing. All right? Okay. Okay, darling. Take, I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Take mm -hmm. care. All right. So just tuning in, you're listening to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne. Calling numbers, if you have a question, it is 
9137. That's 718-502-9137. And to make an appointment during the week, it is the same number, 718-502-9137. So for the caller who had called, I can't recall if it's last week or the week before regarding the death of the spouse and you wanted to file for VAWA, you can do so. Caller, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, sir. How can I help you this morning? All right, I have a question. I have I'm a green card holder, mm-hmm. and uh, my green card was lost get lost a few years ago, mm-hmm. which it's um it's already expired, and I want to I want to reinstate that. I want to get it back. So, what are the status and how long it will take? All right, so you can apply to renew your green card even though you've lost it and it's expired because you remain a green card holder until your status is taken away by a judge or you've surrendered the green card. Time period, it can go anywhere from a month to two plus years. Yeah? So it's it's just their processing. All right? It's just their processing. Okay. So... How much do you charge to do something like that? To do that, to do that? I, I don't discuss price over the phone, sir. You can call the office and they'll give you the, the prices. All right? Take care. All right, thank you. Yeah, everybody's situation is different. All right. Now, I want to... You know what? Someone I pick up Jezebel's, weird man. I'll tell you, a, a, a true wicked person. And sometimes you can't blame people because them get a divorce paper, a summons, or claims notice, and them things say them divorce. But the person never followed through to complete the divorce. I have a client, I'll tell you this. The man paid and disappeared on me, and I need him to sign papers. Call number, write him, certified mail, and the woman sent in her affidavit. Me can't find this man. Unbelievable. Me no know. Must get back together with the woman. Can't find the man. And you who have received the papers would have thought possibly that you are divorced. But there's nothing like wicked people. And one thing living this place, it exposes, I don't think, me no know. Immigrants, you tell me, in your home country, have you ever been exposed to the level of wickedness that you encounter in this place? Mr. this place has some dangerous people. And you have to be careful who you are associate with who you surround yourself with like me personally me not go to people house but don't do it Mm-mm. me just no me free at like posts me not see for that me free at like posts people dangerous at this place man and uh one of the most dangerous people you'll meet upon is someone who knows that they are already married, they have not divorced their prior spouse, and they go ahead and they marry you. And on top of it, so they at the time they married you, they were not free to marry. And on top of that, in the marriage, you are going to suffer abuse. Yeah? Whether it's some battery or some extreme cruelty, which is a the defining standard to get this green card. So the good thing is, 
immigration see that some man got end up with some crosses man and some crosses woman. And that these are the people who are already married but decided that they were going to marry you. Because some people are unruly. They don't follow the rules. And they don't have to divorce them prior spouse. They just go and go straight in a second marriage. The good thing is VAWA has created a definition of what is called intended spouse. So when the nastiness go ahead and married you and knew that they were married to somebody else, yeah? So your marriage to your current spouse is not legitimate because the man, our woman commit bigamy. Immigration was kind enough to provide a venue where you are referred to as an intended spouse, your marriage not real. And it's not through any fault of your own. As long as you believe, say, you were going into a bona fide marriage, that is what, that, that is what counts. Someone meets some drunk or some rat beat. Yeah, man. When we tell you, come no, 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 sir. Eh, eh. And this is such a wide place, it's hard to pull some other file. But the good thing is, you are deemed. So if your spouse is already married to somebody else, never divorced, run go marry you, so you're second wife. Not voluntarily, some girl are living second wife life. But for you, it was not voluntarily done. So you have the ability to file. And you can file your own petition. And one of the good things about this application is, you can even self-petition from outside the United States, yeah? Now, for those of you who are filing this petition, you are given deferred action, and you also get employment authorization. Come on, you are on the air. Yes, good morning. Morning. I have to... I have two kids. One is in Jamaica and my daughter here, she filed for me. She's in the service. Mm -hmm. Now I want, I'm a former green card holder now and I want to um, put my paper in for my son in Jamaica. He's 22. Mm -hmm. How long would it take for me to get in here? About seven and a half plus years. Thank you so much. You're welcome, darling. All right, so, for children who have been abused by their parents, boy, I mean, I never know if it's the time to box size where you are this woman in Jamaica with a cutlass, and the woman has killing her, I beat the picnic. No, sir. Carla, you are on the air. Good morning. Morning. What are you doing? Does it make a difference? Your chirpy, sir. Your yeah, chirpy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, my daughter filed for me and my wife, mm -hmm. our daughter. And um, we have a son living back in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. He's over 21. Mm -hmm. That We just got our green card and wish to file for him. Does it shorten the time period of filing? If what shortens? Is the fact that my daughter is in the service, does it make no. it easier for me to file? No. No. And if she files for her brother, that's 15 years. No. It's better if you file for the child. It's a seven and a half plus. All right? Okay, so she, so she filing for us doesn't have any... No. Wait. No. It just affects uh, your application with her. And depends on where the state is okay. filing. All right, take care. Bye. All right, so people who are domestic violence victims who fall within the defin definition of what immigration determines, you can adjust your status here. And this is a concern for a lot of people. I'll tell you this, a lot of people will not even apply for the waiver knowing that they can't adjust status here. They just don't want to leave. Some people are fearful if they go to the embassy, they're going to get stuck. I personally have not had 
that problem, the people them go, you go down, you, you do your medical, do your police report, you do your interview, and you come back. But some people are absolutely terrified. But for domestic violence victims, you get to adjust your status here, right? Now, for the abused parent, you must be the parent of a U.S. citizen child. Your child must be the abuser and they must be 21 years or older. So if your child is a green card holder, this VAWA provision does not apply to you. You have to be, your child must be a U.S. citizen who is abusive. And I'll tell you this, the way how someone will pick the chat to you, no sir, I want to raise them, what kind of leg be that? And I find one of the hardest things is where that child believes that you did not treat them well growing up and they are in a quote unquote position of power. Yeah, man. Some man who pick them make them feel it. Treating them like dog. And I'm going to encourage you parents, watch how you are raising your children. These children keep this hatred for years. It is unbelievable or worse if you were abusing their other parent they were picking no lego and trust me i gotta feel it so as a parent if you are abused by your u.s citizen child you can absolutely file and the good thing with this domestic violence application is once your self petition is approved, you get your work permit, and ultimately it, it, you get the green card, right? So abused children, you can file that self petition until, in certain circumstances, the age of twenty five years old. Yeah, so you're still allowed. Some protection despite passing 21. For adopted children, the requirement of the two-year legal custody and joint residence, if you have been abused is n and you're seeking to file by yourself, is not required. Yeah? For children who are the derivatives, let's say a parent was abused and they have filed as a victim of domestic violence and they later die whilst the application is pending, as that derivative, you can continue that application. And one of the, the good things about this application is it has removed the public charge ground of inadmissibility from the domestic violence application. Anybody who has filed a VAWA case knows that. One of the things you get is a, once they believe that there's some weight, some credibility to your application, you are able to receive a prima facie determination. That determination allows you to get benefit personally i don't like the whole benefit benefit welfare sort of thing me, me me this is my personal opinion and nobody else's not the station nobody else's i don't like welfare and i personally believe welfare should be given to people who are in need the, i don't think it should be a lifestyle i think when people scam the system, it robs resources from people who, especially the sick, the elderly. You have some people who got through a short-term form of hardship where they need a little help. And because of that, you take these resources and you are robbing them. 
It is not a lifestyle that I like, and I don't encourage anyone for it. For me, it's like the it. it I equate it to the plantation. When you collect these benefits, there are so many restrictions over your life. It's not a thing I like to see black people collecting at all, unless there is a, 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 a real need for it. But then that's just my opinion. All right. So we went through the people who are able to file this application. So let's go over again. The spouse or intended spouse, because someone I get can out a road. Yeah, girl, we understand your plight. Can enough man out a road. I can you someone out there with man and oh, no. young ladies. We were telling us something. Uh, uh-uh. Someone I date someone and I never see the man house yet. How is that possible? That makes sense to you? No. My sister in come and she say, Boy, Antoinette, cause we are chat our friend, right? I chat, we are chat our friend. I'm a really like our friend because the girl is such a nice girl. But she had date the man for years. Someone has just had date for a few months, we are talk years. I should never go at the man yard debt. No, sir. The girl all have picnic for the man and I know where the man live. So till the man get tired, I ask for the address. No, sir, me let me let you find dear one. She had, let me tell you, sir, young girl, don't date the man who think him more than you. Eh? Because some man get tile out a road, yet still una exalt in herself. And what? Girl, you don't even know where the man live. So when this a youth you now, come here to now, some dangerous people in America, when the youth finally let go in my dress, and she go, hey, oh, Jesus. No, sir. When she finally go at the man yard, I want to open that. Would you use a wicked pick? <laughs> hey! All right. So I'm not even going to tell that listener good morning. You know to turn off the radio. You're on the ear. All right. Come yeah, on. Young girls don't want to know watching the self cause. You don't know what the game and the tricks that is out there, you can't see somebody and claim him. Watch out not claim people. When you can't in a relationship with somebody, claiming them, and you don't know where the person lives. You don't come on, you know? Hey! <laughs> You're that crazy. <laughs> All right. Another aspect to this are uh, people who are the spouses and filing. You must have been married in good faith. Yeah? So, if you do a fraud marriage and a child benefit off of this, it no, go work. Turn off your radio. Good morning. I don't have no radio on, please. I'm hearing something in the background, but... No, uh, the lady talking on the TV. Okay, I'm hearing my voice. Well, I'm listening, I'm, I, I'm listening to the TV, what the lady is... is um, Good morning. All right, so call me, what back, the when you, call me back when your TV's off. All right. He's watching the TV. I'm not on TV. I'm hearing my voice. And I'm sure my listeners will tell me they're hearing my voice. Oh. Paula, you're on the air, love. Good morning, Miss. Morning, darling. Hello. Hi, good morning, Miss Osborne. How are you? I am good, my darling. How can I help you this morning? Okay, I have a question. If you're illegal here, your passport hasn't expired and you want to return back home to Jamaica, uh, can you just buy a ticket and go? Absolutely, but they have to be aware that if they have been here out of status or 
more than 180 days, they're going to be barred for three years. And if they have been out of status for more than a year, they're going to be barred for 10 years. But yes, your passport valid, you tired of this place, you buy a ticket and you go out your yard. Yes. Yeah, so there won't be no issues at the airport. They're not no. holding them. They have. A, they have. Okay, a little... thank you. All right, take care, my love. Have a good day. Bye bye. You have a legitimate passport to your home country. Yeah. People them just let you through. Yeah, you not go through immigration for leave. And when you come back, hey, and that's when you book up in a. Mm-hmm. All right, so. For people who are marrying and you are seeking to get that green card as a victim of domestic violence, based on your marriage to a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, the marriage must have been performed in good faith. And just tuning in, you are listening to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne, number to call in if you have a question and your radio or TV must be off, it's 718-502-9137. Paula, you are on the air, love. Hello, good morning. Morning, sister. How can I help you this morning? Yes, please. I have a question for you, please. Mm -hmm. My brother, he leaves Jamaica, 1967. Mm -hmm. He come on a farm working. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't, when the, his time was up on the farm working, what he do, they call it break contract. Mm -hmm. So he didn't return, so he... Well, he landed in Florida when he came up on the, um, on the um, farm working. Anyway, I got um, my green card in um, 1975. Mm -hmm. And I took him to the lawyer by the name of Boss and... Ah, 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 ah. Don't, don't, don't speak, call people name from the program. You're taking to the lawyer. My apology, my apology. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... What happened when they sent him the paper to come in now to the immigration mm -hmm. for interview, he could not read the paper. But, so uh, what I do, I did went with him and I okay. asked the lady if I could read the paper for him and she says, no, although it's your brother, we can't. Anyway, mm -hmm. the, what happened that he didn't follow it up because, you know, if he lives somewhere and once he lives there and he finds that the area gets bad, he moves. Mm -hmm. So... My aunt was living in Brooklyn, mm. and then she um, she passed away. Um, good time now. Mm -hmm. So I pick up another lawyer for him, and that was in Hartford. Mm -hmm. Then he um, he says, um, um, what my brother do now is um, marry to one of his baby mother. Mm -hmm. All right. So it ended up to be the lady. The 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 lawyer says. Forget about it. After he took so much money, he said, forget about it, forget about it. She can't help you, she can't help you. Anyway, I heard about of another lawyer. No, Jesus. In, in Manhattan, and I would never tell you any lie, miss. He paid out some money. Mm -hmm. He paid out some money. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm coming from work, I'm the one who used to take the money down. That lawyer is in Manhattan, and all of them. So anyway, he ended up, that I had was, he says, um, a lawyer will go to him on this term now. So what he do, we went, and then he, they give him interview. This interview was 7 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in uh, Manhattan, and we went. And he take the, and there was the lawyer, one lawyer from the office came and went in, because I couldn't go in the room with him. Mm -hmm. And the lawyer went into the office with him. And when the lawyer went into the office with him, mm -hmm. when she came out, when she came out, she said to me, uh, Miss Day, we, your brother, have answered all the questions. They told him that they will hear from him. He will hear from them. Okay. The thing what they have said to him, that, um, 
um, um, uh, that he haven't got a certain um, he haven't got enough proof mm -hmm. how he came into the country. What year was this? He came in 1967 as a farm worker. No, but when he went to the the, uh, the third lawyer took him at the interview, what year was this? Oh God, you know I, I have to tell you the truth. Let me just let me just say about about three years now, roughly, or a little over. I'm saying the truth because. I really didn't write that down. Okay, but three years now, he had a prior application with a spouse that would have 245 i him. He doesn't need proof of his entry. He's 245 i Well, uh, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying now, miss, um, that um, I happen to go home and somebody recommend me that to, to show proof how your brother come in the country, mm -hmm. go into Kingston, and go where he flew from, mm -hmm. and I did. I did go, mm -hmm. but what happened? They gave me a paper, and the paper is that what and what and what he have to send down to them, so that they can look for his paper and give me those paper to bring back here to okay. show that he to show that he did come on the farm working. So. Thank God, thank God. Um, when he, um, when he when he um, filed up, um, what happened? He got his pension, but they are not giving him the social security because they asked him for the birth certificate for the pension. But they, because he's a taxpayer, he is a taxpayer. Okay, I have a question for you. What year did your brother marry that lady? And did she file? Did she file before April 30th, 2001? Oh, uh, God. Mm. I don't even know if you even remember. And the funny thing about it, the, 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 the lady passed away, what, about maybe about three months ago. Oh, okay. I, I, all right. So did anybody do a freedom of information request on your brother to get all his history out of immigration? No, I don't think so. Logic. I really, I really don't think so, man. Uh, all right. So, um, call the office Monday for an appointment. All right, because your brother has a big history with immigration, and he has had several filings. And depending on the date, he doesn't even have to go through all of that hassle. I think one of the first places to start is to get the man history before moving forward. All right. You can call yeah, because, not because he's my brother. I know you're busy, but not because he's my brother, but yeah. I tell you the honest truth. Uh -huh. He has he don't have no um no bad record or anything. You know what I'm saying? I I, I understand. And then right now, mm -hmm. he's um he's not getting his social security and he's no, a he taxpayer. He will because not. he used he used to do the construction work after he leaves the farm. He will not get the social security if you don't have legal proof. Green card. You have to have the green card. Right. Yes, I know that. So he can yes. call the office on appointment. All right, Doc. Oh. Take care. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you, but have a blessed day. A blessed day. Bye. Lord Jesus. All right. Let us continue. I apologize for the calls that we're calling. I didn't want to cut off the lady. She has given the information upon the brother. So if you want to call in you can call back i didn't want to be rude all right so we discussed in vower this morning what a weird time flying no sir am i in 46 you know hmm. yeah i'm just that one yeah just tuning in you're listening to legally speaking with attorney antonette osborne on 93.5 fm wvip Are you on the air, love? Good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Morning, sister. Yes. Um, I, um, my son was calling yesterday, but I told him that um, maybe your, your office closed yesterday. He want to make an appointment. So, um, All right. So call, 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 mon call Monday morning. Yeah, we don't work on the weekends. We take a break. Right. Monday through Friday. Yes. All right? Okay. Okay, my love. Yes. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh All right, we're pushing forward. We have 13 minutes of our rush and go through. Come tell us that this is like a serious we are, series we are upon the domestic violence. We want to give the community some information for people who have been legitimate 
not victims of domestic violence and they do qualify pursue on to the rules or want to make we want everybody get papers in america that that is the ear some people now got qualified but we'd love to see it on the air love yes good morning morning sir um, yes i got a question i want to ask i find from my daughter mm-hmm. i heard from the visa center but and they say they give me 60 days to answer me back. But I can't add the 60 days pass, and they don't answer me back. Okay, you, you can call them, you know. You can follow up with them, and you can call them. They have a, a, the 603 number. Lord God, I don't know this number out of my head. Hold on. You can call them. Make sure you have your daughter's birthday, your birthday, and the correct names. The telephone number is 603 Six oh three 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 four three three four zero seven zero 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 seven zero zero. Thank you, ma'am. I call them thank early by the morning before cock crow. All right, darling. Oh, Take care. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Right, thank bye. you. All right, so we're gonna run in now. Call like eleven minutes leave. So. On the air, quick on fast. Hi, Miss Anthony. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah, I'm calling on this. <laughs> I'm calling on behalf of a friend of mine whose husband is deceased. Late last, he had this, he was deceased. I think it was November of last year. However, according to her, he was an abusive husband. Mm-hmm. Long story short, the um, she she wants to file uh, for uh, her green card. Mm-hmm. But she wants to know, she wasn't clear as to whether or not she should file on the basis of um, an abusive husband or the spouse of a deceased. I'll tell you this. For the abusive husband, it, there's an extra step to show the abuse. If she has enough evidence where she can't just do it on the marriage, I would say do it as the surviving spouse. All right? And I'm going to go with the Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. You're welcome, my darling. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. All right. We have ten minutes, so you know we're gonna quick and fast. I'm done talk fast already. All right. People who have filed this application, you need good moral character. You know, sometimes you're out of the street and you hear some girl like, oh, some man, that hey boy. Yeah, you you really you can't be a dirty person. Yeah. Let's get this right. Yeah. After of good moral character you know what i'm saying pretty fierce and bad character bad character can't get to this application we can't fast my love good morning good morning yes sir quick and fast love yeah what is this about we are speaking of the eligibility of our victims getting a green card, sir. How can I help you this morning? Uh, well, I don't know the first move I'm supposed to make. Sir, I don't know what move you are trying to make at all. How can I help you morning. this morning? Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. Listen, my husband, he just woke up. What he did, he needs he needs to try to see if he could get his um, passport that he lost it in the a mix of his things being put into storage, mm-hmm. and he's trying to re, to re, you know get it his um, passport again. You think you could help him? Um, did he apply down at the consulate to get his passport? The Jamaican no. consulate. That's that's his first starting point to renew his passport make sure he has his birth certificate if he does not have his birth certificate um he should try and get the birth certificate he's gonna need his birth certificate in order he got his birth oh, he got his birth certificate he birth certificate excellent yes. he got, okay yes. so because he has his birth certificate let him make an appointment with a jamaican consulate so he can apply to renew his passport all right and it's, where that where that might be where that might be uh, the jamaican jamaican con- what are we gonna make me use google this morning hallelujah okay the jamaican <laughs> consulate is at 767 third avenue manhattan all right uh-huh. okay my love 
So, and their Thank telephone you. number, which it, this number, I don't know what, why it never worked, but I'm going to give it to you. 212. Hold on for a minute. Okay. Oh dear, I, I don't know what happened. Did she get disconnected? All right, I don't know if you if you have gotten disconnected, you can call back my darling. I don't know what happened a while ago. All right, so we are coming to the end of the program. I was giving you information on victims of domestic violence applying, right? So, you have to have good moral character for this. I can't emphasize this enough, right? This is not for people who not have no character, yeah? And we spoke about the people who get scammed, the intended spouses. You can apply even though your person, your spouse committed bigamy. As long as it was your intention to get and enter into a valid marriage. The fact that you meet across is our Jezebel does not stop your application for the green card. For children who want to file this application, and I'm sorry I'm going so fast, I want to give my community the information. You can be the biological child of the abuser, the stepchild of the abuser, or the adopted child of the abuser. The child must be unmarried and it must be less than 21 years old all right in some situations they allow you to file up to the age of 25. now if your abuser has lost their citizenship or their green card holder status that does not prevent you from continuing with your application yeah for the children who are filing, the self-petitioning children, you can file whether you're born in wedlock, whether you were born out of wedlock and you're subsequently legitimated because your parents got married before their 18th birthday, or you're born out of wedlock. If it is your father, I'm going to tell you, fathers of illegitimate children, you get the hardest time with immigration. Yeah, kind of forgot to marry the mama. Yeah, or they need to turn some of these women into wives. This baby mother syndrome, single mother syndrome, or they need to create stable families in our community. Nobody don't want to hear baby mother and single parenting. Young girls, watch how not date them a crib to a foot boy who want a little nail clip touch them to a nail. You know? Watch how not them rough foot boy. Watch how not do, yeah? Don't make them turn you in a single parent. Marriage gives economic right. On a fan of out of road and a and a exalt in herself and don't have a ring. Girl, sit down. Okay? Okay. All right. Make one man marry a no girl. Girl, go find one pastor. Make one man marry a girl. Yeah. All right. Illegitimate fathers. You're filing for these children and you never married a mama. You have a choice of you have an ongoing relationship. Yeah? And the Bye. air. Just, good morning. Hi, good morning. I, I had told you the whole lot for a second. Yeah, but and you got disconnected. We got disconnected. All right, baby. Yes. Here's a number. 212. 212-935. 935-9000. 9,000. Okay, so you have to keep calling them, darling. Can them not answer that phone? Keep calling. All okay, right? baby. Thank All right, you. Take care. You're welcome. Mom. Have a best day. I will. Thank you. Bye. All right, so basically we're at the end of the program. So that was part one in the series of allowing victims of domestic violence. Yeah? Forget a green card in America and them deserve it. Boy, a butter of bruise and you can't get no benefit. Yeah, immigration, I said, no girl. And the man, them all get abused too. Because some man on a tough, like, dry, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Some man get abused in America. And only do the styling. Eh? 
Sometimes when I see some woman them can't keep no man, when I take a mirror and look upon herself, crap be at girl who are rough up the man them. Yeah. I'm telling you something. You see this community? This community has lost all concept of family and culturally you have lost yourself and then I live some dirty life in this place what is destroying your family. And I'm telling you, the unity, when the family, my father always said, when the family is divided, a stranger will benefit. And he's so right. My father is not an educated man. My father is a street man, but my father is a wise man. Education can buy a sense. Let me tell you this. On a need to bring back the concept of a family unit back in our community. It is lost. I don't know. I don't know when I misplace it, but the community needs to find it because our children are in dire trouble. All right, so just tuning in. We're at the end of the program. You've been listening to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne. Number to call during the week for an appointment, it is 718-502-9137. That number once again is seven one eight five zero two nine one three seven. Have a blessed Sunday. WVIP and WVIP HD1, New Rochelle, a Whitney Global Media Station. Right.